from WPTV. This is Today on 5 at 11. Welcome to Today on 5 at 11. We start today with breaking news. Deputies are investigating a suspicious death near Palm Springs. Let's get right to WPTV News Channel 5's Arthur Mondale, who is live on the scene. Good morning, Arthur. Good morning, and as you can see behind me, a deputy from the sheriff's office is still here blocking Marmac Drive. When we arrived, the medical examiner was still on scene. He has since now left. Now, you can notice that there's a lot of, of sheriff's cars. I mean, I counted about six to, to about 12 right now. Looking at this investigation, the sheriff's office says fire crews responded to a home before 6 a.m. while fighting a fire, and that's where they found a man deceased outside. Now, another person was injured and taken to the hospital. The sheriff's office has ruled this a suspicious death case right now. While fire officials investigate how the fire started, the sheriff's office is still looking at why this even happened. Um, of course, I'll bring you the latest as it becomes available. Reporting live, Arthur Mondale, WPTV News Channel 5. Okay, Arthur, thank you. Let's get a look at our satellite and radar because we are tracking some rain out there and I'm going to put this on pause so you can see where that rain is actually falling. Going into Stewart, you're seeing some light rain right now. Also heading into Palm Beach Gardens, Lion Country Safari. Looks like this rain is heading into Wellington within the next couple of minutes. Heading into International Polo Club at 11.04. We've also got some rain across uh, South Palm Beach County. Looks like this rain is also tracking uh, towards the uh, southwest here. It looks like it's on its way into uh, Stonebridge within the next couple of minutes or so. So you could see some slick roadways out there. We're also still seeing some pretty strong winds with winds coming in out of the northeast at uh, about 10 to 20 miles per hour. Some spots seeing uh, higher wind speeds up near Boca Raton. You can see those wind speeds picking up to 28 miles per hour. So still breezy out there. We do have this small craft advisory in place until 2 o'clock tonight. Winds out of the northeast at 10 to 20 knots, seas climbing 7 to 10 feet. And then we also have this high surf advisory across the Palm Beach County beaches. So you definitely want to avoid getting in the water for today, but the weekend is looking great. I'll have that full forecast for you in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Katya. Turning now to protecting paradise, our commitment to investigating the environmental problems and working towards solutions. This is a historic day for the future of Lake Okeechobee and the Treasure Coast. The president will tour Lake O today in just a matter of hours. WPTV News Channel 5's Matt Sesney is live in Canal Point where preparations are being made for the president right now. Matt? Yeah, we are just about two hours away from the president's arrival here at Lake Okeechobee. We're being kept a couple blocks away from where the president arrives. He'll ex he's expected to arrive on the other side of the dike, right on the shore of Lake Okeechobee. You can look down the street here to where the entrance is, to where the president will be. The president will actually be arriving by air aboard the Marine One Air Helicopter at about 1 o'clock. He will take an air tour of Lake Okeechobee and then land here in Canal Point where he will meet up with Governor Ron DeSantis and also Florida Senators Rubio and Scott. Now the president, we're told, will talk about the cooperation he's having with his fellow Republicans here in the state of Florida, especially in speeding up funding and work for the rehabilitation of the Herbert Hoover Dyke, which surrounds Lake Okeechobee. That work now expected to finish three years earlier than planned now in the year 2022. There will also expect it to be some talk about that planned reservoir to handle some of the overflow water from Lake Okeechobee. Water releases, of course, have led to the algae blooms in past summers, and Governor DeSantis has been lobbying the Army Corps of Engineers very hard to lower the lake levels. The governor also expected to talk about Everglades restoration with the president, and specifically the cuts in funding to the Everglades in the president's proposed budget. The president proposing just $63 million for Everglades restoration. The governor looking for a figure closer to about $200 million. The White House does insist that Lake Okeechobee is a priority for President Trump. It is certainly a priority for the state of Florida when you think about water quality, the Everglades, the algae issue, and of course the economy for the people who earn a living both on and around Lake Okeechobee. We're live in Canal Point. Matt says in WPTV News Channel 5. Business owners on the Treasure Coast are keeping a close eye on President Trump's visit. 
saying that his support of projects to minimize lake releases is critical to their livelihood. WPTV News Channel 5's Megan McRoberts is live outside Central Marine in Martin County, often ground zero for algae concerns. Good morning, Megan. That's absolutely right. And just as recent as last summer, people who work here at Central Marine would walk down onto the docks to do their job and they'd look into the water to find inches thick mats of toxic blue green algae, of course, blamed primarily on releases from Lake Okeechobee. And it got to the point for these employees that they would have to wear masks just to feel safe doing their jobs. And it's not just the health impacts, it's also the financial impacts to businesses like this. Central Marine, just one of dozens of businesses who reported losses as a result of blue green algae over the years, temporarily paralyzing their business operations. Some have even had to shut down completely from the impacts of algae. So we spoke to the manager here at Central Marine this morning who is hoping Trump's visit will lead to more solutions. I'm hoping that they once again look at the whole picture. We need to look at the nutrients that are being brought into the lake from the northern part. We need to look at the waters that are needed on the west coast. We need to look at the waters that are not needed on the east coast. And we also need to get the water moving south desperately. And, and so, of course, currently water is being released into the St. Lucie River from Lake Okeechobee. Radaba says she already notices somewhat of a difference in the water around here, just seeming to have more nutrients. And she says she is eager to see if any new ideas come out of today's tour. Reporting live in Martin County, I'm Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. The repair work on the Herbert Hoover Dyke began 12 years ago in 2007. Since then, there have been three summers with toxic algae concerns, first in 2013, then in 2016 and 2018. President Trump has said repairs to the dyke are a priority in Florida. In April 2017, then Governor Rick Scott said President Trump assured him the federal government would provide money to finish the repairs within five years, bringing the expected finish date from 2025 to 2022. Then in October of 2017, President Trump instructed the Director of Management and Budget to accelerate repairs to the dike. Last July, the Army Corps of Engineers announced it had received $514 million to go toward repairing the dike. We are going to have team coverage of President Trump's visit to Lake Okeechobee all day long. You can expect live updates as well as alerts sent right to your phone. Make sure you have our free WPTV News app to keep up with the latest. A developing update today. A woman accused of running a prostitution ring out of a Jupiter Day Spa has a chance to get out of jail. Yesterday, a judge lowered Lei Wang's bond from more than $250,000 to $75,000. That's a significant drop, but Wang's attorney says it should have been lower. At last check, she hadn't posted it, and if she does, Wang will remain on house arrest at her home in Hope Sound. It looks like trafficking. It feels like trafficking. It sounds like trafficking. I believe it is human trafficking, but we're just a little short of being able to prove that. Attorneys for New England Patriots owner Robert Kraft are responding this morning after our Contact 5 investigators interviewed Martin County Sheriff William Snyder. In a statement to USA Today, attorney William Burke said, quote, Sheriff Will Snyder admitted that there was no human trafficking. He lied about it. His officers lied about it. I don't really know what to say. I've never seen anything quite like that before, end quote. Kraft is implicated in a major multi-agency prostitution and human trafficking investigation. He isn't facing human trafficking charges, and it's not clear if investigators will pursue them in his case. Right now, only one of the dozens of the so-called Johns in Vero Beach is facing a human trafficking charge by way of racketeering. Switching gears now, you'll want to be on the lookout for alligators. We are currently in gator mating season. And check this out. Yesterday, Jupiter police wrangled a nearly 800 pound gator out of Commerce Park. Oof. FWC is definitely reminding people to keep their distance from alligators and, of course, never feed them. New details about Austin Harrop, the accused killer of a Tequesta couple, how his attorneys could use a new report as his defense in court. Plus, it's a difficult and emotional subject to bring up with children, suicide. Coming up, the best methods to keep that line of communication open. As we go to break, let's take a live look outside. A lot of fluffy clouds out there. Some blue skies as well. The surf is choppy in some areas. How's it shaping up for later today and the weekend? After the break, we'll have another check of Katya's forecast. 
chef, Christina Ferrari, knows what's best to Walnuts eat. Walnuts you should eat every day. It's a brain food. And why? The thought went right out of my mind. You should have a walnut. But what she doesn't know is this. It's a lot to pull one over on me. Cozy up with the heartwarming Ferrari family recipe. Then, believe it or not. Cover it up so I can't see it. Oh, my God. This Las Vegas illusionist is so mm, spot on. I'm thinking right now of the number five. The magic that will amaze crazy. you. Covering Martin County this morning, a new report uncovered more disturbing details about accused killer Austin Harreth. He's in jail awaiting a November trial for the murder of a Tequesta couple back in 2016. Forensic psychiatrist Dr. Philip Resnick believes Harreth had bipolar disorder with acute manic episodes at the time of the attack. His report claims Harreth thought he was half man, half dog. Records show he was making howling noises on the night of John Stevens and Michelle Michonne death, Harif's attorneys have said they'll rely on the insanity defense at his trial. And a warning now for parents. The Palm Beach County Sheriff's Office says you need to know about this one before you take your kids to the bus stop. Deputies say it is never safe to put your child's name on their backpack where a stranger can see it. A child could be more inclined to go with a stranger if they know their name. John. All right, 1112 right now. An unsettling report from the Centers for Disease Control. Uh, suicide rates in Florida have jumped nearly 11% in the past 10 years. A lot of those are from kids and teenagers. While suicide can be a very hard topic to talk about, it's important to have an open line of communication. And here today to help parents and children start the conversation is Dr. Selena Morris. Good morning and thank you for being here. Good morning. Difficult but very necessary. So first, let's go through the warning signs that your child may be considering suicide. Right, so one of the things you look for is signs of depression. So if your child has changed any behavioral patterns, social isolation, tearfulness, difficulty sleeping or too much sleep, and um, we have to really be on a lookout because the numbers show that one in six adolescents think about suicide. One in six and one wow. in 12 actually have a plan to attempt suicide. Holy cow. If a child seems troubled, is it safe to ask if they're thinking about hurting themselves or does that open a can of worms? It does not. That's okay. actually the best thing you can do. All right, good. So talking about suicide, asking your child if they've ever thought about it can save your child's life. You know, I, I would think some parents, you know, maybe they're in denial. Oh, come on, get over it. You know, you can't just be that way though, but I'm sure some parents are that way. They can't believe their kid might be, who's so well adjusted, they think, you know, they can't conceive that maybe in school they're having some issues or something. Right, and now we have this whole generation of this post Parkland, you know, right. kids, right. that PTSD is really on the rise. Mm -hmm. And 40% of children exposed to gun violence, whether it's neighborhood gun violence or a school shooting, do develop post-traumatic stress disorder, and you don't need to really have been there in order to have PTSD. Just that recurrent intrusive thinking about it also can be PTSD. That's good to know. So what are some ways that a parent can bring up the topic in a conversation? You can go directly and say, hey, I see that you're you know, sad or crying or you know, not doing the things they used to do. Are you thinking about ending your life? Or it can be a little bit more indirect and say, do you, any of your friends ever talk about dying or death? And what would you do as a friend? Mm -hmm. And that might actually open the door for the child to say, you know, mom, dad, doc, teacher, yeah. you know, I'm really sad too and I'm thinking about it. All right, so that's the best way maybe just be direct about it. Talk about okay. it. Uh, talk about some of the resources that are available for parents and kids. Mm -hmm. Well, immediate resources. There's a, there's a difference between thinking about suicide and actually having a plan. If someone hears of a plan, whether it's your friend, your child, your patient, anybody, as soon as there is a plan involved, that child needs immediate help. So, you know, go to the emergency room, you can call the Suicide National Hotline, which is 1-800-273-TALK. That is 24 hours a day as well. Your pediatrician is a great resource. Mental health professionals are out there as well. Okay, good to know. Dr. Selena Moore, thank you for joining us. We've got a full screen I want to show you here. Remember, if you or someone you know is struggling with suicidal thoughts, you are not alone. There is help. If we can go to that full screen, the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline mm -hmm. is available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and you can also call 211. All right, thank you, doctor, oh, once again. And here's Katya now with the forecast. That was a lot of me.
outside and at Delray Beach, uh, you can see these waves that's uh, still pretty high out there. Remember, we do have this high surf advisory until later on this evening. Wave heights climbing five to eight feet for our Palm County beaches for the Treasure Coast beaches. Your uh, high surf advisory has expired. There's also a small craft advisory and in, in place until two o'clock in the morning. Winds out of the northeast at 10 to 20 knots, seas seven to 10 feet. And then for the weekend, those winds will start to calm down. We'll see a light chop on those inland waters. Waters. Viper cast shows breezy conditions throughout the day with winds out of the northeast at 10 to 20 knots. Then as we head into later on this evening, these winds will start to die down a little bit. Saturday winds uh, out of the southeast at about 5 to 15 miles per hour and then even lighter for your Sunday at about 5 to 10 miles per hour. So if we get a look at this wave height forecast here, you can see those winds uh, will help bring down those wave heights. So across Palm County beaches, wave heights will drop down a four to five feet across the Treasure Coast five to six feet as we head into your Saturday. Get a look at Sunday. It gets even better because those winds are starting to taper off even more. Uh, wave heights across the Palm County beaches at three to four feet and then across the Treasure Coast beaches for your Sunday down to four to five feet. So the weekend's looking pretty good. We are tracking some rain popping up here and there across the viewing area. Uh, it does look like most of this is starting to fizzle out here though. You can see some light rain uh, pushing into some parts. It's beginning to make its way out of Palm City right now out of the Rocky Point area. Palm Beach Gardens extending into Lion Country Safari. You're seeing some light rain there and then I'm tracking this right now. This is near Kings Point in Stonebridge heading south into Olympic Heights a High School at 1119 this morning, 1122 at uh, Boca Woods area. As I walk you through Viper cast uh, partly sunny skies throughout the day could see some scattered showers here and there. Partly cloudy as we head into tonight and then could see some more light rain as we head into tomorrow afternoon, possibly even some pockets of heavier rain by Saturday evening. Sunday, we again, we do have a 20% chance for rain in store. Again, a 20% chance for rain for your Saturday as well. So for Friday, if you're heading to the Palm Beach Boat Show, breezy and windy, those highs in the upper 70s today, warm and breezy for your Saturday, low 80s. But again, winds will start to die down as we head into the weekend. So winds out of the east southeast at 5 to 15 for tomorrow. Winds dying down at 5 to 10 miles per hour heading into your Sunday. But temperatures will warm up above that seasonal high to 82 degrees by your Sunday. Here's a look at that seven day forecast, 78 degrees for today, then warming Things up to the low 80s by your weekend. All right, Katya, still ahead. There are more ways to mess up sun protection than just forgetting to put it on. Mm, the top mistakes that are putting you at risk and the easy fixes to protect your skin from skin cancer. Stay with us. Welcome back, 1122 right now. Pump the brakes, there's a recall affecting Volkswagen drivers. The company is recalling some cars, the Golf Sport Wagon, the Jetta and the Tiguan uh, SUVs. It says that the vehicle's rear coil spring may fracture. That could damage a rear tire, putting you at risk of a crash. Some 56,000 vehicles are part of this recall. If you're worried about it, call your dealership and they will fix it free of charge. Researchers are diving into the secret benefits of an avocado pit. Scientists at Penn State University found anti-inflammatory properties in the pit's extract, but the California Avocado Commission warns against eating the pit itself. It says research behind the seed is not extensive enough for it to be considered safe. All righty, I am really excited for this segment, and I think you should be too. You squeeze it out, you slather it on, you call it a day, but sunscreen can only do its job if you're doing yours, and that involves some education. So here to help us is Jeffrey Fromeritz, a board-certified dermatologist. Welcome to the show today. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Wonderful. So first thing I want to ask you about is the new FDA guidelines when it comes to sunscreen. Why are they so important? So it's a great question. When we go as consumers to the store to get sunscreen, it's like alphabet soup. There's UVA, UVB, mm -hmm. tons of different ingredients, different numbers, very confusing yes. for an average person. What the FDA is trying to do is to come up with a way to simplify the system, to understand what SPF numbers mean and clarify what the terminology means. So what does broad spectrum indicate? 
what does UVA and UVB protection mean, and what are sensible numbers to understand, and what do you need as a consumer so you have better guidance on good choices. Mm -hmm. And all of this is so important because skin cancer. We live in Florida. We are in a very, very sunny state, and that's something we need to avoid. We're fighting an epidemic, and truly skin cancer remains the number one overall cancer that we treat, period. When you sum all of the other cancers, basal cells, squamous cells, melanomas, and unfortunately, they can be deadly especially in the case of melanoma. So primary prevention with sun protection and sun protective clothing, two of the simplest and most important things you can do every day. Mm -hmm. So you've got some top 10 mistakes of what we're doing when it comes to applying sunscreen. So what are those and how can we fix them? So the number one mistake everyone makes is they don't put enough sunscreen on. Yes. And the reason is when we look at SPF, it's two milligrams per square centimeter of skin. That's a fancy number, but what it means is for your exposed areas, it requires one ounce of sunscreen. And when you look at an average container of sunscreen, they only have three ounces. So that means that one of these normal containers would really only be three applications if you're doing it the right way. If you under apply, your SPF is actually half or less than what the bottle indicates. Wow. So you're getting much less than what you think. Yeah, we've got some more tips there. Um, don't forget your lips. That, lips are you know. cri critically important. <laughs> and in fact, there are very special sunscreens formulated to use for the lips. Mm -hmm. We've got some examples here today that we can look at. And then it's important to put sunscreen on every day, not just when you're, in, when you're going outside, but if you're sitting by the windows, they're not UV filmed, you're getting ultraviolet damage. So you've really got to conceptualize. You've got to use it every day, even on a cloudy day, even if you're staying inside. And then really the other big trick to think about or thing to concern is SPF numbers. Yes. And we're sometimes tricked to think that a 50 is twice as good as a 25, mm -hmm. and it's really not. The differences are more narrow between those. So the higher you go, the more protection you're getting, but not so dramatically where it helps you is to correct for under application of sunscreen. And really quick about aerosol sunscreen for kids. I use that too because I think it's easier to use. So it seems easier, but the truth is you're not putting enough on typically. We under apply aerosols and they have propellants in them that we really should avoid breathing if possible. So if aerosol is the only one you could use, I suggest holding your breath, spraying, then walking away and taking a deep breath. Very good. And then again, check your expiration date on your sunscreens. And also before we wrap up, wearing simple hats. You've got to, it's so easy to do. Mm -hmm. Sun protective clothing, hats, sunglasses, gloves. We have a catalog here. There's beautiful, well-made products that you can get. Mm -hmm. And we talked about so much today. If you want to have this in a detailed description, we have it on our website. Perfect. It's dermatologyofboca.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Dr. Thank Jeffrey. You. I appreciate your time. John, back to you. Thank you so much. Speaking of sunscreen, if you plan to head outside today, we're going to have another check of your weekend forecast. And President Trump is in Palm Beach County. He will head to the Glades to talk about work at the Herbert Hoover Dyke. We have live coverage straight ahead. Welcome back to today on 5 at 11. Let's get another check of your weather right now with Storm Team 5 meteorologist Katia Hall. Now on top of the very breezy yes. conditions, we're also tracking some showers. I know we just can't catch a break, huh? But as we head into the weekend, things are going to start to calm down and taper off. So here's a look at the radar right now. You can see some rain popping up here and there across the area, heading into Jupiter Farms, Pratt and Whitney. You're seeing some rain right now, and then also tracking south into Acreage. If you're heading in that direction, look out for some wet roadways. Lion Country Safari making its way into Binks Forest and Arrow Club in the next couple of minutes and Stonebridge also seeing some light rain right now. So as I walk you through hour by hour, you can see some scattered showers popping up here and there throughout the day, partly sunny skies. As we head into the overnight hours, we're going to clear out. We'll see those clouds, but no rain, but then a 20% chance for rain as we head into your Saturday and also your Sunday. Now rain chances do go up to 40% by Monday as a storm system approaches the area. I'll have more details on that in just a few minutes. All right, thanks so much, Katia. The president's visit to Lake Okeechobee could shape the future of the lake and potentially help prevent another algae crisis on the Treasure Coast. We have team coverage from all angles today, but we start with WPTV News Channel 5's Matt Sesney, who's live at Canal Point, where the president will be soon. Matt? 
Yes, indeed. In fact, we expect the president to arrive here in just about an hour and a half at one o'clock. The president will actually be arriving on the other side of the dike over there, right where those emergency vehicles are parked. The Marine One helicopter will give the president a tour by air of Lake Okeechobee, and then he will land right by the shore of the lake. We expect the president to talk about the cooperation that's existing now between Washington and the state of Florida in rehabilitating the Herbert Hoover Dyke around the lake and especially finishing that job three years ahead of schedule in the year 2022. We also expect the president to talk about managing water levels in the lake, which of course has led to some of the algae blooms in past years. Uh, when water is released from the lake in the summer months, Governor DeSantis has been lobbying the Army Corps of Engineers to lower the lake levels now in anticipation of that. We also expect the governor who will be here, we expect him to talk with the president about money, funding for Everglades restoration, which had been cut by the president's recent proposed budget. But there really is not a lot that the governor and the president disagree upon. The same could be said for Florida Senators Rubio and Scott, who will also be here. The president expected again to arrive at about one o'clock by Marine One Air Marine One helicopter. We're live in Canal Point. Matt Sesney, WPTV News Channel 5. And thanks. Many of you on the Treasure Coast are anxiously waiting to learn what the president's visit will mean for you. This map shows uh, how another algae crisis could form. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers discharges extra water from Lake Okeechobee through the St. Lucie River. The water flows through the St. Lucie locks and into places like Palm City and Stewart. Eventually, it all becomes a big, stinky mess. WPTV News Channel 5's Megan McRoberts is live at Central Marine Stewart, where algae is always bad for business. Good morning, Megan. Good morning, Tom. That's absolutely right, especially when Lake Okeechobee releases kick up during those summer months. People who work near the water, especially those here at Central Marine, know it is incredibly likely that they're going to come out to the docks and they're going to find those thick blue green algae mats, inches thick mats of that algae. It was as recent as last summer that they had to wear masks at work near the water just to feel safe doing their jobs. Fortunately, here at Central Marine, uh, multiple algae crises have not tanked this business financially, but it hasn't been easy to stay afloat. And other businesses that rely on clean water to operate have had to shut down completely as a result of prolonged algae blooms during the summer months. We spoke to the manager here earlier this morning at Central Marine, hoping Trump will see all aspects of what she considers essential to stopping the algae blooms. That's looking at the water coming into the lake from the north, the water needed on the west coast, not needed on the east coast, and overall the need to get more water moving south. There's so much going on and to fix this, we do need the funding. We need the president to approve what we've been fighting for, at least I have for 15 years. So again, a lot of eyes here on the Treasure Coast, keeping track of what will come of Trump's tour. Some looking to uh, see if any new ideas might even come out of this visit. Reporting live in Martin County, I'm Megan McRoberts, WPTV News Channel 5. Now again, we're going to have team coverage of President Donald Trump's visit to Lake Okeechobee all day long. You can expect live updates as well as alerts sent right to your phone. Make sure you have our free WPTV News app to keep up with the latest. It's Vietnam War Veterans Day. The West Palm Beach VA Medical Center will honor the veterans who served and who are still alive, as well as those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. The event is open to all Vietnam veterans and their families. It starts at 2 this afternoon. It's at the VA Medical Center. Today marks the day the last 2,500 troops were withdrawn from Vietnam 46 years ago. Well, from Tampa all the way to Ohio. The amazing trip a cat made before she found her family. That's coming up next. Welcome back. It's 1139. Now to protecting paradise, our commitment to investigating the environmental problems and working towards solutions. Today we're focusing on teaching a new generation to protect paradise. WPTV News Channel 5's Amy Lipman went to an elementary school where children are learning the skills they need to inherit this planet. Our oceans are in trouble. A lot of important lessons are taught in this first grade classroom in Calusa Elementary in Boca Raton. And it tangles up organisms like Celia. But our future really relies on this one. It's harming all of these organisms. I talked to a few friends who, who are educators. Do you guys have anything in your science program that, that explains the 
our sensitive South Florida marine ecosystem? And everyone yes, said sir. no. Pollution! Sure, students will not get questioned on a standardized test about how to protect the environment. 500 million. But the test of time is even more serious. I read that this is the last generation to save nature. Marine! Debris! Marine! Debris! Okay. So Boca Save Our Beaches you to close your books. is teaching first graders. Yes, that is plastic. Exactly how to do that. There you go. Through this enthusiastic lesson with program educator Morgan Knowles and an interactive workbook. Okay, so when you get home, you're gonna write your name right on that line. The founder of Boca Save Our Beaches, Do you think this yeah. belongs in the ocean? Jessica Gray, wrote it a few months ago, based around a seahorse named Seymour. Guppy friends, meet Seymour. It's from a German tribe that translates to mighty at sea. And follow me to Seymour. The ultimate goal is to make this lesson be a trash hero, a lifestyle. It gets in the ocean and it hurts the animals. It just instills that in their mind. The next time they see a piece of trash, they would pick it up. Big giant thank you to our oceans on three. Reporting in Boca Raton, Two. Amy Lippman, WPTV News Channel 5. That's good stuff. WPTV is committed to protecting paradise. You will find original stories, investigations, and ways you can get involved on WPTV.com slash paradise. Covering Florida now, a beautiful moment between a father and daughter captured on video inside a Disney resort. You have to listen to this. Wow. You would have had no idea just seeing this man walking by. The little girl in that video asked the pianist at the Grand Floridian if her dad could sing. And he, of course, as you can hear, delivered the private voice and piano teacher from Connecticut, belted out Ave Maria as his proud daughter watched in awe. When he finished, no surprise, there was a lot of applause from people around them. All right, here's an, another incredible story. An animal shelter in Ohio is trying to reunite a cat with its owner here in Florida. Barley showed up at Angels for Animals as a stray last weekend. The shelter scanned her microchip and found out she went missing eight years ago from Tampa. She was found nearly 1,100 miles from home. The cat's owners say that they found her as a six-week-old kitten in a dumpster. She escaped when the family moved to a new home. This story shows just how important microchips can be. The shelter is now trying to coordinate a flight from Ohio to Tampa to get this kitty home. Wow, long way from really home. important to have those yeah, microchips. Absolutely, that shows you right there. Mm -hmm. Still ahead, we've got your weekend plans covered. Our Taste and See reporter T.A. Walker is running down the five fun things to do. Fuzzy, but it's still fun. That sound that means we're on TV. It's 11:46. <laughs> From activities on the water to fun in the sun, even a couple of musicals, there are yeah. plenty of things to do this weekend. And who is it? Our Taste and See reporter T. A. Walker is here to break everything down in his five fun things to do segment. Hello, T. A. Hey guys, how's it going? Go, First go. up, we're at the Maltz Jupiter Theater for West Side Story. It's a story inspired by Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet. West Side Story takes the tell, tells the tale of the two star-crossed lovers to new heights, running now through April 14th at the Maltz Jupiter Theater. Tickets are actually almost sold out. Oh, Holy but cow. check this out. You here you can see me learning how to be Dude. a shark at rehearsal the other day. I think I did okay job. The uh, actors placated me at the end and said, way to go, T.A., but I could tell I was not really that good. And you were oh, pretending you. to be you. what? A shark. Well, a shark. <laughs> That's one of the gang members. It's one of the gang. Oh. It's literally a shark in the water. <laughs> yeah, when like, you're well. a jet, you're a jet, and then you're a shark. And, yeah. you know, well, we hear there are a few boats in town. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of boats. Yeah. Boats well, we um, can't afford, by the yeah, way. Yeah, right. Uh, it's the Palm Beach International Boat Show, plus food, music, and fun. Runs, runs along the West Palm Beach waterfront now through Sunday. $1.2 billion worth of yachts and accessories, including hundreds of boats, ranging from eight-foot inflatables to super yachts nearly 300 feet in length. One-day admission for adults is 
$28. Yeah, and they've got some deals for kids this weekend, too. Really great weather this weekend. I know they're looking forward oh, perfect. to that. Maybe that eight so. footer we can afford. I don't know. If we all pooled our money together. Or a small inflatable. <laughs> I could do that one. Inflatable five. That's what we'll call it. Yeah, we'll do that. <laughs> There's also something else going on. You're going to be in a parade this weekend. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this. It's the Palm Beach Pride. It's a festival that celebrates the LGBTQ community, equality and respect in a family friendly environment, which runs Saturday and Sunday. The festival runs from noon to six both days and is located in Bryant Park in downtown Lake Worth. I'll be representing WPTV in the parade, so make sure we meet up after the Palm Beach Pride Parade starts promptly at 11 on Sunday and can be viewed on Lake Ave in Lake Worth. That is my home city. That is going to be really it's exciting. Tough. It's a lot of fun. Right, that's That'll just three of the five, so where do we find the rest? You can count. I'm proud of you. <laughs> <laughs> to get information on School of Rock playing at the Kravis Center through Sunday or the Sandy Shoes Seafood Festival in Fort Pierce tomorrow, head to WPTV.com slash taste and click on the Five Fun Things article. Cool. All right, Wonderful. All right, All right. Thank Let's you so much. Thanks for having me. Check All with right. Katya on what the weather looks like. Okay, and usually yeah. I wait till the end of the forecast to show you this, but let's just get crazy and show you the weekend forecast. Something special for your Friday. So uh, heading into the weekend, we do have a 20% chance for rain. Here's what it looks like on Saturday. Temperatures warming up to the low 80s. Again, that 20% chance for some scattered showers, but those winds starting to come in out of the southeast at 5 to 15 miles per hour. Here's what Sunday looks like starting off the morning nice and cool in the upper 60s. We have a slight chance for rain to start the day. Then those rain chances go down to zero as we headed three seven o'clock in the evening on Sunday and then five to ten mile per hour winds as we head into uh, uh, the your Sunday. So it's actually looking really nice as we head into the next couple of days. We just got to get through another breezy day. Not as strong as what we've been feeling over the past couple of days, but winds will start to die down as we head into tonight. Wave heights for your Saturday dropping down to four to six feet and then by Sunday with winds tapering off even more, dropping down at three to five feet. Here's a look at those winds still breezy out there. That's for sure. And as we head into the day, these winds will start to drop down uh, into uh, five to 15 mile per hour winds for your Sunday. So a small craft advisory is still in place. Winds of the east northeast at 10 to 20 knots, seas seven to 10 feet. Those inland waters will be choppy, but for Saturday winds out of the east at 10 knots and even better by Sunday seas dropping down two to three feet with the light chop on the inland waters. Satellite and radar is picking up on some rain across Palm Beach County right now. So we do again have that 20% chance for some scattered showers today, but it does look like uh, mostly partly sunny skies throughout the afternoon. And then again, that 20% chance for rain for Saturday and your Sunday highs this afternoon, warming up to the upper 70s. Again, those winds at about 5 to 15 miles per hour and then slowly dying down as we head into the night. Here's a look at your seven day forecast 78 degrees for today, low 80s as we head into Saturday and Sunday, 20% chance for rain today, Saturday and Sunday. And then by Monday, we're going to watch as our next storm system makes its way into the area. That's going to bring up rain chances to 40%, still in the mid 80s by Tuesday. As that frontal system moves through the area, it'll help drop down those temperatures back in the mid 70s. By next week, Wednesday and Thursday will be back in the 70s, but still looking uh, nice into the weekend. We've got low 80s, low rain chances, and calm winds. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Here are the five things we're following throughout the day. Palm Beach County Sheriff's deputies are investigating a, suspic a suspicious death after a mobile home fire. It happened inside the Marmac Colony Mobile Home Park off Lake Worth Road. Fire crews were putting out the fire. They found a man was dead outside. Another person was taken to a local hospital. Crews are also looking into what caused the fire. It's a historic day for the future of Lake Okeechobee and the Treasure Coast. The president will tour Lake O in just really a matter of minutes. His focus will be on the rehabilitation work to the Herbert Hoover Dyke around the lake. The completion date has now moved up to 2022 from 2025. We are continuing team coverage. You can expect live updates as well as alerts sent right to your phone. So make sure you have our free WPTV news app to keep up with the very latest on the presidential visit. And a forensic psychiatrist believes accused killer Austin Harif had bipolar disorder with acute manic episodes at the time of the attack. His report claims Harif 
thought he was half man, half dog. He's currently in jail awaiting a November trial for the murder of a Tequesta couple in 2016. Be on the lookout for gators. It is mating season. Yesterday, Jupiter police wrangled a nearly 800 uh, pound gator out of Commerce Park. FWC is reminding people to please keep your distance from gators and never feed them. And Katya? Okay, let's get a look at our boating forecast. We do have that small craft advisory in place for today. Seas 7 to 10 feet. Inland waters are going to be choppy. I wanted to show you this again for Saturday. Winds out of the east 10 knots. Seas dropping down 3 to 5 feet, so a light chop on those inland waters. And then for your Sunday, it looks even better. Seas 2 to 3 feet. Again, a light chop as we head into the weekend. So it's just going to be breezy today, but it looks like the weekend's looking good. Low 80s Saturday and Sunday, low rain chances. All right, we just received word that uh, President Trump has mm -hmm. landed uh, at uh, Mar-a-Lago, and in just a few minutes, he'll be headed uh, on his way to Lake Okeechobee with a particular interest of uh, checking out Laco and the Herbert Hoover Dyke. Be sure to stay with us on WPTV.com as well for updates.